All right, so today I'm going to be performing an abdominal assessment. Um, to begin, I'm going to start by looking at the abdomen. I'm going to be looking for any scars, any lesions, um, the color of the abdomen. Um, also, you can look for dry. Um, the patient seems to be normal. The only thing I do notice is just the tattoo. The only abnormal thing that usually you wouldn't find. Um, so, in symmetry wise, the patient's abdomen is even. One side is not more raised up. I don't notice any hernias that are very visible or anything like that. Um, so, from there, I can go ahead and listen for bowel sounds. Um, so, I would start in the right lower quadrant and I would move in a clockwise direction. And the patient does have positive bowel sounds. I can listen for up to five minutes in each quadrant to um, confirm that I do have positive bowel sounds if none are heard immediately. Um, and then I could also, at this point, I could use the bell of my stethoscope to listen for any um, brewies, and that would be heard um, above the aorta. And so I could listen for a brewie, and that would indicate some cardiovascular issues. And then I could also listen for an adrenal brewie. And I do not hear any, which is a good sign. Um, so from there, I could go ahead and percuss her liver. And so I would start, um, it's, the liver is located in the right quadrant. So I would start um, from an area of tympani to an area of dullness. And whenever I hear this dullness, this is going to mark our liver span. Um, so I will start from the bottom. Okay, and so I could mark where I heard that. And then I would start at an area of resonance and work my way down. So I start up here near the lungs and work my way down um, until, I, until I heard the dullness. And then I could take my ruler and I can measure and see how um, many centimeters that is. And so, in a, um, a normal patient, it should be anywhere from, it should be around 6 centimeters, 6 to 12. Um, and then if it's 2 to 3, um, either above or below that, then we could have some liver abnormalities. Um, from there, I can palpate the liver edge, and so what I'm going to do is take one of my hands, and as the patient breathes, I'm going to see if I can feel the edge of that liver slipping above, you know, against my fingertips. And then I can also use the hooking method, which is going to be taking two of my hands, and I'm just going to try and feel when she breathes in and out where that liver edge is and make sure that it's symmetrical. I'm also feeling for enlargement. Because obviously if you're way over here still feeling it, then the liver would be enlarged. Um, so now that we've felt the liver, I can go ahead and do some light and deep palpation of the abdomen. Um, with the light palpation, I'm just kind of watching the patient's face to see if she's grimacing any. Ask her if she's having any pain as I'm palpating her abdomen. Mm -hmm. No pain? Okay. And then with the deeper palpation, what I'm doing is I'm going to use kind of the rolling method. And I'm going to feel various parts of her abdomen and still watching to see if she has any tenderness. Ask her if she has any tenderness. And no, the patient does not have any tenderness. Um, so she didn't guard her abdomen, obviously, when I was trying to feel it. I could also check for some rebound tenderness, so I would just press and then release quickly. Was, did that hurt? No. Okay, so the patient does not have any rebound tenderness. Um, from there, I can assess the spleen or percuss the spleen. So I'm going to be starting on the left side this time, and I can just percuss along her chest wall laterally. And I want to hear timpani as I'm doing this. Um, and if you don't hear the timpani, then you could have some spleen enlargement. And so I just hear this timpani, and now I can palpate right below that chest wall and feel for the spleen. Now, you won't always feel the spleen. If you do, there's a likely chance that it is enlarged. 
Um, and then if we have the patient turn over on her right hip, which we won't do at this point, but we can also feel um, for the spleen whenever she turns over as well. And again, we shouldn't really feel the spleen unless it is enlarged. Um, so from there, we can go ahead and check for the CVA. So we'll have the patient sit up for us. So we're going to check in for a CVA tenderness. I'm just going to make sure that the camera is in a good viewing angle. And it is. Okay, so we're going to, um, the patient, we're going to feel for her 12th rib and her last rib. I'm going to feel there. I'm also going to feel for her spine. And the angle at which I can feel her spine and the 12th rib is going to be that coastal vertebral angle. And so that is where I'm going to place my hand on either side alternating and I'm going to ask the patient if she has any pain when I hit my own hand of course and uh, kind of percuss this area. Any pain? Okay. Any pain? So the patient did not have any pain when I did that um, which means that she likely does not have a kidney infection or any kidney issue. If she did have pain we probably have a kidney infection or some sort of kidney issue going on with this patient. Um, so this concludes my assessment of the abdomen.